Architecture Codex. If you want to see more, like, comment, share, and most importantly, subscribe. To the dismay of the architects, New Yorkers are already calling it the Jenga Tower or the Jenga Building. This is better than the official and boring name of 56 Leonard Street, a new condo residential tower in New York's Tribeca neighborhood designed by Herzog and Demeron. We saw them in Architectural Codex video number 31 at the Walker Art Center in Minneapolis. By New York City standards, at only 57 stories tall, it is not setting any height records, but it is getting some notice because of the architectural design. And it joins a long line of recent skyscrapers fighting for identity in an ever more crowded New York City skyline. And that seems to be about it. I have not read much about this building in the normal architectural press. No one is proclaiming that Herzog and Demeron have reinvented the residential skyscraper. Perhaps this is because their regular fans are bored by this building. This is not as avant-garde as most of their designs. And the avant-garde are very snobbish when it comes to designing for rich people who would be the clients here. And maybe this is just another example of a big name famous architect being tamped down by the high stakes New York City real estate market and practical considerations. Perhaps the sensible architects of record Goldstein, Hill, and West had to restrain the ideas of the Pritzker Prize winning architects. Architects of record are engaged, particularly when fancy schmancy famous architects design things they don't know how to build or couldn't be bothered with details like structure, plumbing, and ventilation. It also saves the big name architect from having to get a license in the jurisdiction or set up a local office. Architects of record are the real architects who take the pencil sketch on a napkin or the unrealistic 3D image created in Maya and do the hard work of turning an idea into the reality. They will produce the construction documents, colloquially still called the blueprints, and they will also stamp the drawings, meaning that they swear before the government that these drawings meet building codes and take on that liability personally and perpetually if anything goes wrong. Such architects therefore feel constrained by the laws of physics and the law of man to design something that can be real and safe. Add to that that this project was speculative real estate development and the laws of economics come into play. Something too architecturally avant-garde will not sell. The architects themselves released a statement which seems to be repeated verbatim in the few articles that I have found. In it they write about how new buildings in New York City are simply pursuing height and that is bad. They talk about their buildings seeking homes distinctive in their identity and avoid the boring repetition that most condos and most new skyscrapers suffer from. And while this is all true, it really is just public relations. Because you know, given half a chance, Herzog and Demeron would design the tallest building in Manhattan. But perhaps the architecture critics of the world are refraining from forming an opinion about this building because they're waiting for me to discuss this building. Well, here I go. I like it. It is logical and distinctive, and a fine addition to the New York City skyline precisely because it is not too tall. There, all you English majors and art history majors writing about architecture can go form your own opinion. The building has two distinctive parts, the lower level and the upper penthouses. The lower levels evoke in me memories of Walter Gropius's entry into the competition for the Tribune Tower. Architecture Codex video number 30, which heralded modernism coming of age even though it was never built. The lines are simple, modern, efficient, even if all 57 floors have a different floor plate. It is a semi-regular glass box, but with the terraces that give it scale, humanity, and diversity. Then, somewhere around the 40th floor, it starts to shift, as if the constructors got lazy about lining things up. These upper levels are what inspired the Jenga nickname after the popular game where competitors must remove blocks of wood from an assembly without toppling the tower. 
But my first reaction was Habitat 67, the Moshe Softy building and prefab construction technique used in the 1967 Montreal Expo and we discuss in Architecture Codex video number 22. And this is what Herzog and Demeron mean in their statement about being distinctive and having identity. Because if you're going to pay $50 million for a pied de terre, it might be a nice thing having it easy to find in the skyline. There is an element of chaos at the top of 56 Leonard, which I think adds to its appeal in the same way that Tudor homes romantically capture the desperation of the Dark Ages in their abundant asymmetry. I think people prefer a certain amount of complexity in their homes to avoid the dull sameness every day. In a city selling real estate to world billionaires looking for a place to park their wealth, uniqueness becomes a marketable commodity. The danger in architecture is that uniqueness can come off as strange, ugly, or have a very short style shelf life. It may not be the noblest of pursuits in architecture, but then this is real estate development posing as high design to give the rich client what they want. Celebrity architects, and not the presumed boring architects of record, are one way to give this elite clientele the distinction they seek. Perhaps the buyers had no clue who Herzog and Demeron were before they purchased, but I suspect it will work their way into their braggadocious conversation after they close. It certainly has worked its way into all the real estate listings for the condos in the building. And you get the feeling that Herzog and Demeron knew they were slumming, designing for the limited medium of the New York City real estate market, like a Pulitzer Prize winning novelist who will write for TV. So while the Jenga Tower enters into everyday life in New York City, only time will tell us if it is an enduring design or just an odd diversion. In the meantime, it gives King Kong something to do the next time he's in town. I'm Michael Molinelli, and this is Architecture Codex. Thank you.